Praise the Lord. This morning I want to speak with you from the subject. Hypocrite. Amen. Amen. Say with me. Hypocrite. 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 Now look at a neighbor. Look at a neighbor. And and, and hollow these words. Hypocrite. Now see right there somebody want to fight somebody. Because you think if somebody don't call, you a man. Amen? I need your help on your undivided attention because as we have now moved from level to level and we're moving into new dimensions in God, we sometimes need to see ourselves as we sometimes really are. The Bible says man ought not think more highly of himself than he ought to. The Bible says in a man or woman's own eyes all of their ways are righteous. Amen. But too many times we are crippling the body because of the judgmental content in our discussions. Our mouth may not contain the filthiness of a word of cuss accusation or a sharp and forking tongue that allows us to be able to level somebody because we have a devil vocabulary. But there is a judgmental sentiment that can rest and lie within the body of a believer. I'm talking about church folk, Christian folk, that can allow you to demean one to a place that their name is less than when you began. Can I go a little bit further? Have you still got your Bibles open? Not Tim Effinger, but God in his holy, divine, providential word says judge verse 1 not that you be not judged right. mm -hmm. for with what judgment you judge you will be judged and with the measure you use it it will be measured back to you amen <laughs> isn't it amazing when you stop for a moment to think about what God has saved you from Anybody hear God save you from something? First of all, I need to find out who God saved you from something. Amen. See, if God didn't save you for anything, then Jesus came in vain. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So don't sit there in your dignified, sophisticated uh, seat and act like you have not sinned. Amen. See, so many times in the church, we, we just topical discussion some sin. We, we talk about crackheads and we talk about alcoholics and adulteries and all that. But you know what? It doesn't because you have not done any of that but there's something you done and if you didn't do it you thought about it am I right about it you watched it, you looked at it, you peeped at it you perused it or you were in conversation about it but as God has saved you from the wretchedness of your past you ought to understand that there is a mirror that every now and then you can fix your hair a certain way. Some of the men used to wear a part in the middle of their head. I remember when I was in high school, had a part in the middle of my head. Some of them had it on the side. Some of y'all used to wear cherry curls. And, and some of y'all used to wear your hair a different way. Some of you wore it back. Some of y'all had the big hair. Can I get a window? But, but every now and then, when you look in the mirror, you look like your past. Who am I talking to this morning? I say you look like your past because something gives you similar to how you used to be. Am I right about it? On a good day when author and writers was not bothering you, you get your old stride you used to have. Can I get a witness? And you're feeling good about yourself because you got your old, your old walk. Can I get a witness? You got your old talk, your old conversation, the way you move and the way you groove and the way you're talking and dealing with people. But our conversation has had a shift. Mm -hmm. yeah. You may not be the crowd that talks about stocks and bonds and the Dow Jones Act, 401k. 
You may not be the crowd that talks about the things that's happening with the who's who, but you're talking about something. And it's amazing how the devil can allow your tongue to arch itself. To, you don't talk about you. You don't talk about your family. You don't talk about your situation. You don't talk about your circumstance. But you talk about your neighbor. Oh, yes. Am I right about it? Yes. And in your communication about your neighbor, you judge them as if, in fact, you have not been them. Look at our neighbor, say neighbor. Take another crackhead to know a crackhead. I ain't through, say neighbor. Take another drunk to know another drunk. Neighbor, take another manizer or womanizer to know another manizer or womanizer. Go on, fix your mouth, say that. Take another hoe to know another hoe. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on now. Come on now, come on. Take another pimp, no another pimp. Come on now. Take another dog, no another dog. Bark, bark. Come on now, who we fooling? Why do you know so much about I smell like a hog? I know it's like a hog. Smell like somebody got some reef around here. How do you know what reef will smell like? They got a walking like they drunk. How do you know how drunks walk? in the mirror. Because yes, just yesterday we had a schism in the body, a situation going on, a little something, something that had happened that it caused us to not to be prim and pop, proper and fit to sit in the body. Not that the body had excluded you, but you took yourself out because you were not worthy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How many didn't come to church one day because you know your Saturday night had you held all the way down and you played too long? Let me see who I'm talking to this morning. How many didn't get to church because Friday and Saturday had you back and you couldn't make it in there? You wanted to come, but you couldn't find straight lines. You wanted to get there. How many, how many, because of who you messed with and somebody knew you refused to go to that church because your thing was at that church, so you just changed location. Come on, who am I talking to right now? How many had breath mint, peppermint, and, and it still wasn't enough to put an application on what was in your mouth? Because vodka loses out of your system. Judgmental critic. See that ain't going in, drop again. See, I told you, then I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, that whole family was drunk. Their mama was just that way. They all them all of them was just drunk. So I tell you, but they 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 drunk top chef. Bless their heart, God, God. They drunk top chef. God, God bless them. The babies look like look at the baby just like look like he drunk, little man. Oh, bless his little heart. Look at him. Already got a stagger, not a swagger. He got a stagger on him. Look at him. Bless his heart. Already. Look at her over there. She ain't had a hair done in five weeks. Lord have mercy. I tell you, she the baby ought to get up. And you don't know what's going on in my life. You ought to know if you went through something that God saved you from your sin. How many here should have been sleeping in your grave? How many here God saved you from a bad situation? But it wasn't you that saved you. It was Prince and Matthew that visited. Your, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment, Lord, because of you. And I want to thank you. Sometimes we're critical. Ought to allow folk to ask the question and a toe down stupid. <laughs> Tell me your sin. Amen. Church now has gained notoriety for being the biggest hypocrites in the world. Hypocrites, because hypocritically we'll say one thing and do another. See, we'll praise on Sunday and raise hell on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Am I deacon backing up? It's all right, am I deacon?